The transducer test module is organized in several views for easy testing and the easy assessment of results. As a first step, remember to check the local hardware configuration. Make sure that you have the correct outputs and inputs assigned to perform this test. The test view comprises three different tabs to parameterize the test. Going from right to left, the first tab contains common settings that apply to all the specified test points. If multiple functions have been defined in the test object, it is necessary to select the one to be tested. Remember that only one function at a time can be tested. The test points can be specified in primary or secondary values. To keep it simple, we will use secondary values in this example. The test mode presents two options. Auto-stepping is selected by default. It simply means that the test points are executed automatically in the same order as they were added to the table. Manual stepping gives you the opportunity to manually confirm the execution of each test point. A dialog box pops up for this purpose. In principle, all executed points will be displayed in the transducer's characteristic of the test view. This is the default setting. However, you can decide to only see the failed points. If you have a measurement device with no separate auxiliary power supply that is energized by the connected voltages, just check this box. The CMC will inject nominal voltages in all the phases that are not being subjected to the test. Since voltage is always a single phase test, we have to select the phase to be tested. For instance, we choose phase 1 in this example. Enter the ambient temperature and the relative humidity that exists during the test. These two values will appear later in the test report. The Sweep tab allows you to test the measurement stability through a sequence of test points with equal step size. You can either define a voltage or a frequency sweep. The availability depends on the function that is tested. In fact, since we are testing the voltage measurement, only the frequency sweep is available. The input value will be applied to each test point of the sweep. In other words, this value will be kept constant while the frequency changes. Enter the sweep parameters, start, end, and number of points, to finish the configuration of the test. As we see in the simulation, the sweep is evaluated as a whole, and the result is displayed as a status icon in this field. Now we go straight to the test tab, which is used for inserting individual test points. This can be done manually by entering the input value or by directly adding a point from the graph. An alternative and faster way of doing this is by using the Add Multiple option. This launches a sequence definition dialog where a maximum of 250 test points can be defined. For example, we can add 10 points from the range of 0 to 90 volts. Once we confirm the dialog, the test table is available. The test run specifies the number of times that a measurement is taken at a particular test point. If you choose two or more test runs per point, the average error and the standard deviation are displayed in the table and the test report. For each test point, you can have a look at the detail view. This section contains the data entry fields for the output generators and the resulting power. The availability of the fields depends on the function being tested. If any value is changed, all the related values are modified accordingly. For example, if the power is changed, the respective current is recalculated to match the power at a given power angle. It is also possible to apply a pure sinusoidal waveform or superimpose either a DC component or harmonics. Now we are ready to start the test and check the results. After the test is completed, the transducer test module provides error curves for the absolute error, relative error, and the device error.